podcast episode number 76. You join myself, Chris, my lovely two co-hosts, to my right, your left, the techie teacher himself, Mr. Tom. I was wondering, there was a slight pause in when you were introducing us then, and I was like, what's he going to do? Is he going to throw something out there that I'm not expecting? But no, we're, we're, we're just, just like normal. How are we doing, Chris? I could throw something random over to you if you want. Who's your right. favourite Jedi? Ooh, it's got to be Obi-Wan. Absolutely. Why Master is that Kenobi? just going to say Paul Clune then? <laughs> like... ah, ah, it's going to be Master Kenobi. Hello there. Hello there. <laughs> and below him, joining us once again, the man of many pixels, Mr. Richie. Richie, who's your favourite Star Wars cantina owner? I don't know the names of them. I don't pay that much attention to the names oh, of the cantina dear. owners. Like, I think, is there only literally, how many cantinas has it actually featured in Star Wars? Because obviously there's one in Mos Eisley. That's the famous one. Mm-hmm. I'm but thinking of, uh, I'm thinking of Dex, who helps Obi-Wan yeah. out to find his Camino <laughs> Da. His little Camino <laughs> Da thing. It sounded more like Watto than Dex, that did. Yeah. Um, how are you doing, Richie? Oh, my legs hurt. Oh. Okay. <laughs> Well, we won't no, go too much into that yeah. one. I'll, I'll oh, no, let... <laughs> I've, been out, I've been out running a lot recently and I pushed myself quite hard yesterday. He's doing better than I am. Running from <laughs> things or towards things? A bit of both, a bit of both. A bit of both, a bit of both. Keep it interesting. Um, running away from my car, then running back towards my car. You take your car. You could just cut the car out and uh, run less distance. I, I meet up with someone else. Oh. Um, so I drive to meet up with that person. Oh, Which wow. actually, I was surprised when I checked the COVID rules for our area, is fine. Wow. Is it Dex from Star Wars? <laughs> yes, don't imagine, actually. Don't imagine I forgot to use a cantina on it all them times I go out for runs with him like three times a week. He's... I never bothered to ask him what he does. He does. <laughs> what is happening? Got... <laughs> He's got a bitch of a commute, though. He does have multiple arms. That is that is true. Yeah. However, just like this podcast, we have multiple arms of conversation. Uh, thank you, everybody, for dropping in for episode 76 of the Sounds of Stadia podcast, your weekly podcast where we round up all of the Stadia and gaming news and sometimes some random exercise conversation, Star Wars chatter and favourite Jedi conversation. Uh, Of course, this is the longest running Stadia podcast, this side of Google Maps, where we all get together and talk about all the fun we are having with games and Stadia. If you are new to the show, if you are new to the channel, do give us a like down below, subscribe, click that notification bell so you are kept in the loop with all of the things we bring you because we we are quite busy over here at SOS headquarters and we do lots of content for you lovely people out there in the world of YouTube and podcasts. Uh, This last week, we jumped in to Pac-Man, Richie, for yes, some mega community tunnel battle action. Uh, Tom, we came across the same problem we had when we played the demo, where the <laughs> the game's not great at just letting you make a party or join a party. Yeah, You have to complete set challenges first before you're actually even allowed into the elimination battle royale mode, <laughs> which we found out, but uh, we got there eventually. Yeah. Did what was we... a little annoying is, for the um, challenge maps, the discontinuous where you can focus on your... your, con- your generated challenges mm. you can just everyone pick a room jump in the same room easy you can't do that with the elimination stuff wow okay. so the main part of the game you can't just you just it's just random yeah it needs <laughs> some kind of lobby system or yeah add, add everyone into a party just, so you're yeah. you're there for the battle royale but obviously if you could get four or five friends together and face off against each other that's that's part yeah. of the fun but yeah we just had to <laughs> randomly jump into elimination queue and hope we were added into the 64 person team yeah to uh to fight off against each other but um yeah. great great pro game check it out everyone if you've not already and check out our live stream too uh, i also jumped into pixel junk raiders the exclusive title just dropped on steady this last week from q games uh, part of the pixel junk series i had a great time with it uh, procedurally generated worlds um very, very difficult. If either of you two have checked it out yet, there is a very steep learning curve, and I've seen many, many people uh, from the Twitter, um, the Twitter and Stadia community, posting how difficult it is. And I, for one, lost my weapon within the first in- encounter, and you don't get that back. The game doesn't preemptively tell you that you lose all weapons upon death, so that was a sharp learning curve. And then I had to fight with my fists for the first couple of parts, and uh, yeah, those uh, damn octopus squid creatures whatever they are uh, are quite uh, quite aggressive quite frankly uh, either of you two planning on checking out uh, pixel junk raiders is it in any of your wheelhouses i think it's 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 on the list of uh, of many things i want to play i um i had the chance to jump into a couple of the pro games this month as well 
um, including Avicii and Vector, which I actually really enjoyed. But uh, Pixel Junk is definitely one that I think I think I'd like to sit down and experience. It's just uh, just a matter of how much time I've got to invest in it to actually sort of you know make a, a, a solid opinion of of how I feel about the game. But it looks good, uh, as you say. I, I, I checked the video out as well. Um, seems like my kind of game. Like I said, a little bit of like Risk of Rain mixed with Dark Souls difficulty mm. in a way as well. Sad. But uh, yeah, it's on the list. Yeah, and we should point out as well that it does come uh, with state chair integrated. So if you go check out my video, if you're up to the challenge and you feel you could do better without a, uh, a weapon, uh, my link for my state chair is in the description of the video. So feel free to click that, check it out, and uh, see if you can uh, beat those damn pesky squid things that are in there. I don't know how much it'd look with squid things. Whether it's no. in uh, Baldur's Gate. <laughs> Is it Baldur's Gate? Yes. Yeah, I get the, I've got the right game. Uh, I always get it confused with uh, the other one. The Illithids. Yes, those things. One. Um, but of course, uh, yeah, that was great. I had a great time with that one. So go have a look at that and check that one out. Um, but you are here for the Sounds of Stadia podcast. We do have a great show lined up for you this week. We're going to be talking about uh, Project Hailstorm and uh, has it passed? Has it gone somewhere? We don't know. Has the weather moved on to different areas? We're going to be talking about all of the exciting Stadia games that are coming, have come, and have just been rated for Stadia. Keep tuned for those, and uh, we're going to be discussing the deep dive intricacies of games as a service with Avengers, Division 2, and Outriders all getting patch updates, fixes, glitches, bugs, season passes, extra content to keep you lovely gamers out there busy twiddling those thumbsticks. Um, Richie, we also discussed last week at length the, uh, the side quest. We broke down whether YouTube Premium and... Stadia should be combined. I don't know why I suddenly start speaking slow then. Should yeah. be combined into one super subscription package and uh, loads of you out there let us know across all social platforms, Facebook, Twitter, the YouTube comments, uh, what your thoughts on it were. It's a great conversation, a great proposition yeah. in my opinion, so go check it that one out. It was a great conversation. It was a great conversation. There's quite a different perspective, a lot of different perspectives coming into the play and like, I don't think any of them were like illegitimate. There's one or two people who just went, no. And that's it. Like, yeah. Great contribution to the conversation there, Dave. Dave, was it I just specifically Dave? I was going to say, we have, we have <laughs> a couple of hours. Yeah, but, um, yeah. but um, a lot of people, some people were generally in favour of, some people were against it, and they all had their reasons, which I generally thought the Facebook communities did a good job in that conversation. That's part of conversation. And yeah, our lovely Patreon Dave out there, he doesn't mean you. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> just you, Dave. You disagreed yeah. with me. Because, of course, if you do want shows like Sounds of Stadia SideQuest, our topical off-the-beaten-track path, what is it, Richie? Off-the-beaten-road? Uh, I always put I you on the spot this. with this one. You should know yeah. this. It's your show. <laughs> the show we take a set of the critical path and explore more what the video game world has to offer. That's wow. the one. That's the one. <laughs> of course, yes, yeah. you can get that up to five days early as a, a patron of our channel if you want to give us a bit more support or you just enjoy our content and you're one of those generous people out there. Head over to patreon.com forward slash sounds of stadia where you can join our patreon team as part of the sounds of stadia community for as little as one dollar and you get the content early you get exclusive chats with us uh, game content and much more so head over there if you feel so inclined but gentlemen let's get into the uh, the nitty gritty of the week as they say tom will you give us the rundown for the super sexy special stadia story segment aka the, the news. news and it's been a very gamey week for news this week we've had lots of yeah. ratings lots of games dropped lots of games announced uh, which is good to see because i think i mentioned last week i was slightly worried that the future for, for stadia's <laughs> games going into spring and summer seemed yeah. seemed quite dry with no clear big announcements or connect on the horizon we are just kind of heading into april with outriders and then Far Cry, which I think was pushed back to late spring, summertime, as the only big hitters. And I know the industry in general has slowed down quite a bit, but obviously the great thing with Stadia is that they're constantly trying to grow their library. So games that do exist on other platforms hopefully should be making a trickle across. And uh, remember, we were told that there's going to be up to over 100 games coming this year. So as we wind down the year, we've, we've said uh, in previous years, 2020 was all about that, that they told us so many titles were coming. And as the months tick away, that means more games per month, just based on maths. 
mm-hmm. um, or math, if you're a part of our American audience, uh, take out the S. So first story of the week, uh, we got a, a title we've known about for some time, but it was kind of randomly dropped as part of the blog post. Uh, we got Saints Row the Third remastered from THQ Nordic, uh, dropped on the Stadia Store, caught everyone uh, by surprise this week. It's getting some uh, interesting conversation sparked uh, <laughs> around it. Saints Row usually does. Uh, if, no, if none of you out there have seen it already, it's essentially a Grand Theft Auto take a spin-off as such um where essentially you have a crazy you have a city and wacky antics ensue with guns grenades bombs tanks uh sometimes superhero powers depending on the title uh, that you're playing um lots of dashes of purple it does it does very much uh go with that color scheme throughout i've i've only ever dabbled in the saints row games uh, i don't know why I, I may see myself as more of a grand theft auto person but they definitely have their time and place and i've seen a bunch of people enjoy them recently the biggest talking point i think within the community is the price that's been yes. the the thing that's made people either raise their eyebrow this game dropped for 34 pounds 99 in the uk so just over 40 dollars us and uh i guess uh, richie i'll throw it over to you to start with is that price tasty enough for you or is that way too much for a remastered game that's now several years old at this point well the remaster i think is only a, a, maybe a year or two old the Correct. initial release is quite old it's probably getting on for 10 years now but actually before this um before the recording i did look at my steam library because i own it throw the third and i think it was like 2012 and i played about 10 hours back then so for me personally i'd say the price is too steep but in general, I don't actually think it is. Right. Okay. But because I know I wouldn't get the, for me personally the value out mm. thirty five pounds worth of value out of that game. Yeah. So but I think a lot of other people could get. It's a good game. It's just not up my. It's not in my wheelhouse to be honest. Yeah. Release the remastered uh, release was uh, May twenty second last year. So not yeah. not too far off less than a year actually since this came to Stadia, which is great in terms of future games coming with a shorter t- turnaround. Uh, the original release uh, was back in 2011, November 2011 yeah. on on last gen. Last gen? Last yeah. last gen. PS3, last, last 360 and yeah. Windows. So yeah, last last yeah. gen. Oh, times are ticking, gentlemen. Uh, how about <laughs> you, Tom? Was, uh, 34, I know you're a big, uh, you're a big supporter of uh, buying games and giving develop <laughs> give it i mean yeah, that aside but giving developers that push to say like look we want your games on the platform um is this one of those that tickles your fancy or is it uh is it too uh, much this time um, it is a really fun game like I, I i can't emphasize enough if you've not if you've not played the saints row franchise before you should at least give it a shot particularly if you are a fan of the likes of, of gta um gta 5 did a really good job of sort of like upping that level of comedy within the game i suppose even though it's still obviously quite uh quite an an adult game in a way um but saints row uh the third one in particular does such a good job of going over the top with like even to the extent of the vehicles some of the stuff you get is um is really really bizarre like hover jets and the like as well where you can just rain rockets on 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 pedestrians i mean it sounds so 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 vulgar at the same Mm. time but um the price does does sort of warrant um warrant a little bit of questioning um only only to to the extent of the fact that i do feel like it would do more success with a sale naturally uh but if you compare it to other platforms at the moment it is sitting at the same price point on all other platforms apart from uh the playstation store where it's currently on at a half price sale and that's looking like a sale that's going to be ending within the next few weeks, but not immediately. So I, I think it's one to watch. It's not one that I'm going to pay out through the nose for initially, but with a discount to knock it down to about half price or sub £20 is probably where I'd be quite happy to pick it up. Hmm. It's an interesting conversation to be had just with remasters in general, mm. and it's been the whole conversation for like the PS4, uh, Xbox One era. Where where does the value sit? Because we know we've had the SpongeBob remake, we've had the Destroy All Humans remake from THQ Nordic, and now we've got Saints Row. Is that on? What is is that comparable to something like the Mass Effect Legendary remaster, where 
it's it's in the Bioshock collection, yeah. the Arkham Knight collection. It's, like, is the quality of the game initially detrimental to the price it should be brought back as a remaster for? Because let's face absolutely. it, this game is inferior to Grand Theft Auto uh, Five, which is about to get a th- yeah. another remaster for for next gen, current gen. Yeah, I think you have to split remasters and remakes into separate categories. So a remake is ground up, rebuild the game, trying to honour what it once was. Mm-hmm. In which, in that case, I think it can justify the full sixty dollar price tag for a game. However, a remaster is largely just increasing, improving textures, improving lighting, stuff like, that. giving it a bit more, re giving it a new polish, hmm. and then putting it back out. Which again, it is. I think. Sorry, continue. Um, I was just about to say, I think price of games is generally quite subjective on these things. I don't think £35 is overly egregious when it's the same price across, barring sales, across all platforms. Mm. It yeah. just comes down to, do you think you it's going to be value for money? Because this is the game where I think you could easily sink 100 hours into if you're into that style of game. Absolutely. And it is worth mentioning as well that at that price point, the remaster does come with all of the DLC from the original game too. So you get all of the original expansion mission packs. So there were three main mission packs that came out as part of DLC for Saints Row the Third. Um, But there was also a ton of like smaller DLC. If you think sort of like the Witcher 3 levels of DLC with like the the free stuff that that, uh, CD Projekt Red released. Um, Little, you know, little add-ons, little... Um, pieces of gear and and vehicles and stuff like that. But if you are really into that sort of crazy over the top um, third person running around, stealing cars, blowing shit up and so on, uh, definitely, definitely check it out, especially if it goes on sale. I think from memory, one of the most fun experiences I had with this is when I jumped in with a friend online and we played through uh, one of the DLCs, which was the the Genki Bowl, which was um, you had this crazy cat uh, mascot, which for some reason, I, I can't remember the exact reason why, but you were, you were forced into some sort of like mix between, for, for the British audience out there, fun house meets um, like sort of like a, a Blood Bowl Saw type movie where you've got like massive over the top colors, um, fun party place where you've got to run through loads of obstacles. Um, Think like your kids like soft play jungle centers, but then you've also got enemies firing rockets at you. You've got saw blades dropping from the ceiling and it's, it's, it's a ton of fun. It's a ton of fun. I'd play it just for that alone, but at 35 pounds, I'm, I'm, I'm not going to jump into it just yet. I, I kind of think it's unfortunately, well, I don't think it's necessarily put that badly priced depending on who's, who's buying the game. I don't, I think if you're into that style of game, 35 quid, you're going to, you're going to have a good time. You're going to be happy with your purchases yes. in the end of the day. But I do think if they got, had it got it just sub thirty, they would have probably sold a lot more copies and made more, ultimately made more, probably more profit out of it. Yeah, it is worth throwing out there as a disclaimer as well for anybody who is interested but doesn't quite want to commit to it without knowing more information at the moment that um the Saints Row games never had sort of like a a big multiplayer online um experience compared to like the GTA GTA Online. You can only play up to two people with the game, so you can jump in with a friend. Uh, which is fantastic o- online. You can have tons of fun with it, but don't expect any more than than the one friend to join you at any time because it doesn't support it. Correct me if I'm wrong, but I think it was only GTA Five that added that online c- component for Grand Theft Auto. Yeah. But Grand Theft Auto Five has been going on, been an active game for so long. It feels like a long time in the works. I mean, yeah, it's literally spanned three game generations. <clears throat> so yeah. that that's a testament to how good it is but I think that goes back to part of my lack of real interest in this game I know I would have fun in it I've, I've played a little bit yeah. with my brother on in, on PS3 days but there's something about it that I get these kind of like parody vibes that as a as a gamer it doesn't do anything for me um, I don't remember since, since we the first game at all I can't even picture mm-hmm. it in my head um, the the third and the, the fourth one very distinct because of the art design and the, the, the big crazy blowout stuff but it's kind of similar in a vein to how I feel about like the Just Cause series I know yeah. I would have fun having all that crazy action and such but it just, just doesn't really do anything for me, I don't know why Is it because it's, is it because it's too much of a knockoff of GTA? Because I sometimes feel about that about some games I don't know whether it's just like the elitist or some sort of element of snobbery <laughs> that I've got or something where it's not it's like what? it's like having budget like 
it's like it's like mom mom says we've got gta at home gta at home it, it's it's saints row it's it's not quite the same thing really is it yeah, like branston beans instead of Heinz. It just uh, just causes an interesting comparison because i kind of have a similar feelings about both saints row and just cause where yeah i'd have a good time for for a while probably about 10 to 15 hours potentially i, but I think they're just they're just a bit over the top and like for saints row i think for me the comedy is just very surface level it's there's no subtlety in it and i think i've just outgrew that sort of yeah possibly i mean let's it's just fa- a bit too silly yeah i like, mean let's face it the game's signature weapon is a sex toy bat I was going to yeah, say a large purple like that, like, object. <laughs> when, when I was 13, that shit would have been hilarious. Mm. I'm 31 now, though. <laughs> it was like, and it's still funny. Okay. Yeah, <laughs> it, is, uh, it is funny, but for a much shorter period of time. Yes, yes, okay. Yeah. It's no. like, well, oh, cool, I've got the dildo back. Kill one guy, I'm done with that now. <laughs> but what about if you killed a granny on the street with it? With a dildo bat. Yep. She'd love it. Oh wow. dear. Well, well this is what weird. <laughs> you you made it go oh, weird. You sorry, made it go weird. Uh, but yeah, so Saints Row the Third, it's available now at thirty-four pounds ninety-nine or your local equivalent. Uh, hopefully it does set the kind of the, the the roadmap out there for other Saints Row titles to come. I'd I'd like to see the fourth in the series just so we have some kind of consistency with sequels. Uh, because our next story up on the dock is a follow-up to the original Monster Jam Steel Titans game that dropped on Stadia last year. We now have the sequel, which is... Uh, it's arri- Is it arrived or out? Why am I uh, blanking on that? Is it out? It's also, it has started rolling out this week. I couldn't yeah. remember because it was kind of like a stealth yeah. drop. Uh, yeah. If it was out, I just announced. So yeah, it started showing up this week on uh, on midnight. I think it was like Wednesday night or something. Uh, it's out. It's available to pick up now. And... Uh, mm-hmm. I was curious to know whether this is the first sequel game we've got on Stadia. Little Gentlemen. Nightmares 2. Oh, yes, true. Yeah, that is a good <laughs> one. Game, that's it's the first one that springs to my mind right there Little point. Nightmares 2. Uh, because yeah. obviously now Stadia is hitting that kind of like two-year two mark coming up. Um, yes. We want to start to see that repetition of games. And there's another story we're going to be talking about later on the show regarding Football Manager and how critical it really, really is for the, the future of Stadia to start to get these sequelized franchises, these annualized franchises to be returning year in, year out. Otherwise, that, that argument that you see on the internet so much is the, the faith in the future of the platform. And if you're getting one game and then the sequel doesn't drop, you do start to question are the developers interested in the platform a stadia not doing it if you can't buy the game then you're naturally just forced back to the other platforms which is is a business model that isn't what you want uh case in point probably for fifa that drops in less than two weeks now if there's no mention of fifa 22 you do it does undermine your whole business model and your entire platform that right if it's not coming day and date next year how long does people's patience go for until they just kind of start to give up on it and cancel their pro subscription, mm-hmm. stop looking at the titles coming because we hear no mention or, or roadmap. We keep, I'm sorry to keep saying our roadmap, but it's, it's critical when every other well, platform has one. Here's the thing with the roadmap. At the moment, I can't think of a game that's coming to Stadia that I'm excited for. Ooh, hot take. I, well, I, I, I don't think that's a hot take. No, it's not. No. I, it's just, it's... Can you name what games are coming up? I think the... Far Cry mm-hmm. and Outriders for me. But even, I even then... I'm excited for. Yeah, and Far, Cry, Far Cry. And I've been very vocal about my thoughts on FIFA, so... Far Cry has never been the kind of franchise that sort of really had me excited for it personally and 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 likewise fifa i feel like the wind has been taken out of the sails by the length of time that it's taken to come to the platform other than that we're really sort of in a rut right now where outriders is the only real game that's on the horizon that is new Mm -hmm. to an extent that 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 we i mean and even then like i'm i'm more excited for it but I'm not sort of the excite like the levels of excitement um as I would have been for Cyberpunk or hmm. fingers crossed that we do get Mass Effect uh in the future. When is that scheduled for May, right? End of May? 
end of may yeah uh, mass effect because yeah, yeah, i'm I, reordering I, soon so well, yeah that goes back to our remaster discussion i think that's quite yeah. highly priced it's just short of 60 pound i believe for the mass effect legendary edition and i currently right now have my eyes on a, a ps4 version for to play on my ps5 if that came to stadia i'd play it there but i don't mm. know if it's coming so do i hang fire do i wait is it not coming at all does the entire month of may pass and then i end up just playing my playstation for the entirety of uh, June because I'm playing every single Mass Effect game. That's potentially how what three full campaigns, 60, yeah. 70, 80, 100 plus hours that I'm going to be playing on a on a competitor's platform because the game's not here. Yep. Yeah. Mass Effect's a guaranteed purchase for me. I'm holding out on a pre order, hoping that it might come to Stadia. I wonder but whether if it the doesn't likes... come, I'm buying them PlayStation Five. Yep. Yeah. Same. I wonder whether the likes of EA are actually waiting to see how fifa does i know that's a bold call to make but because it's it's a different I, it's, it's a yeah yeah i i know exactly yeah. where you're going to go with it it's a different but it's a different branch of ea it's still it's still under the umbrella yeah I, uh, there's a couple of problems i'd have with that mm. one it's a completely different game that's it targeting yes. a different audience two fifa 21 i think is doomed to fail on FIFA, on stadia depending on the price if the price is above 30 quid, that game's fails, failing yeah. immediately. Yeah, because I agree. The game's six months late. Yeah. Most, pe- most FIFA players have FIFA already. Mm-hmm. True. With, uh, yeah. Without taking too much of a sidestep away from the, mon- yeah. the, the Monster Jam game we started off this conversation with, uh, yeah. more trucks, new worlds, play with your friends, online, split screen. And this one actually has online play as well. Yeah. Cause hey! we, in the first, I did check. Um, the first one, we were actually planning a first night stream on it until it came out. We found out it was local play only, which we football, I think all three of us thought was just ridiculous. Yeah, mm. for a no, racing game, yeah. it's so easy to add multiple things yeah. in. But yeah, there's 38 official trucks. Upgrade them over the course of your career. Authentic stadiums and race tracks. So jump into all that action if that's that's your bag. Uh, obviously, the original was a pro game uh, eventually, so you could go check out the pro game title if you've got it in your library. See how you feel about it, and if the second one interests you upon its launch. Uh, well, well, it's out now, so go check that one out instead. Yeah. Um, but yeah, back to the the kind of FIFA conversation. Do you? Th- do either of you two think there is a world where FIFA is included in Pro? And then you're saying there, Richie, about the price and the value, and everyone who's got FIFA's got it. Okay. That is true. We know loads of our friends are football fans. They buy the game on release and they play it all year round. If it was to drop on Pro, all of a sudden that, that potential for Stadia, play FIFA on your phone, play FIFA on the move, play it on your tablet, not restricted to your console and your television which it is for everybody else, could that be a big thing for both stadium marketing and the game? I, and I EA? don't know. I think the general industry's view on stadium at the moment is still quite pretty cold and cooling. Um, I think that might work if it was day and date with FIFA 22, but FIFA 21, six months later, it dilutes the effect. I could see it being a pro sale, mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. but I actually just don't think EA... It depends, because if EA is just banking on Ultimate Team, making the money back there, then it's possible. Well, you've yeah, got to imagine I, the game... It doesn't game... feel like an EA move, to be honest. Yeah, it doesn't, no. but I just keep thinking to myself, like, so, like moves need to be made somewhere. Yeah. And I just think, yeah, you're right. EA have made their money from FIFA, so why does bringing this to a platform so so much later have any financial gain for them, really? For If, if the three because... people who play Stadia pick it up... Yeah. Great, you've made you've made what ninety quid on a whole, on a whole game pot. Like obviously, there's more than three. We know that. Yeah. Um, but yes. there has to be something. I just think there's got to be someone at the Google marketing te- team saying, right, we've been at this for a year and a half now. What do we need to do differently to really drive the numbers? You've got a franchise that's always in the top ten sales of the year. It makes hand over fist money for for EA with Ultimate Team, like you said, Richie. How do we get it into people's homes and hands so everybody can play FIFA anywhere without any any television needed or restrictions applied? Yeah. And I think that would be like make it either free or really cheap the or model. part of pro. And yeah, you're right. I don't think the those conversations set. happen in honesty. But the models they've already used the the right model. The cyber cyberpunk's release. Mm. Cyberpunk was a good release in Stadia. It worked. It came out day and date. It got people testing out the platform. FIFA could do that as well. But it means having a marketing campaign centered around that game to bring people over. Okay. And I again, I think um, 
the game coming out six months on Stadia after its initial launch. And it's it's also a game that has planned ob- obsolescence in it as well. Because come September, mm. when the next FIFA 22 comes out, the game's obs- basically obsolete at that point. Yeah. yeah, the next iteration comes out and that's it. People just jump yeah. ship and move to the that's new one. That's why I'm so harsh on this delay because half of the game's lifespan is already passed. Exactly, so it just makes me think, like, why would EA bother porting it over for probably, like, the... the unless, obviously, Google give them, like, a couple... It, it's kind of weird because back to that conversation about Ubisoft games and, and Red Dead being ported for, like, tens of millions... D- d- would EA even want the tens of millions? Like, would 20 million from Google really make a dent in their finances to bother even attempting to port the game across when they've got their all, all like their entire catalogue of games to focus on already? It just a big part of my soul just thinks there needs to be something more to this than meets the eye, and there probably isn't. The game's probably going to come out on the 17th, <laughs> and it's going to be yeah. 29.99 as part of a launch sale, and then we probably won't hear about There's FIFA also- 22. But there's also another element to the whole FIFA story as well is what version are we going to get the PS5 equivalent version or the PS4 equivalent version because I, bear in mind if you can go on Amazon right now because I checked this morning and buy FIFA 21 for PS4 for about £30 and that gives you a free upgrade to PS5 I, I, I've got to be cynical I'm going to be cynical do it, once Tom, again. Do it's, it. it's, going to be the, it's going to be the PS4 version that we get where there's no chance in hell that we get the next generation version of it so, um, because I just don't think that EA are willing to put in the time and effort to do that um, regardless of what anybody out there who's optimistic for Stadia is probably thinking I'm sorry to shit on your parade but that's you know that's the, that's the gist of it um, at the end of the day we know from from the history of things that ea is out there to make money as a business we've talked about that in the past again and again they just want to make sales they're not going to dump like loads and loads of resources to getting the next generation version across the stadium at the moment they're just going to try to get a quick you know a quick make a quick book on the platform it depends and then on go the from that it depends on the contract they have with Google. yeah yeah it, it does but once again we we can't sit here and and speculate what's going to happen yeah. we just have to look at the, the the facts that are laid out in yeah. front of us and 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 go you know judge judge based on that yeah. um what what i would like to see is i'd like to see a world i'm just trying to think about how to how to up the player base and things like that again i'd like to see ea actually consider um opening up a almost like cro- cross progression in a way i suppose with fifa in in the sense that you can carry across like your your ultimate teams from one platform to another like um like ubisoft have yeah but you don't necessarily like you still have to buy the game on another platform i'm just trying to think about how it could work from ea's perspective you still have to buy the game from an on another platform but you can cross progress um your ultimate teams because there is no way that somebody who's invested in Ultimate Team on PlayStation mm. is going to then buy the FIFA version and then start from scratch. That's not going yeah. to work because mind, um, the amount FIFA... of the, yeah the amount of resources yeah. the the amount of time they've put into getting those resources they're just not going to try to replicate that on a new platform. No, uh, that's another thing with the PS4 and PS5 upgrade. It just transfer everything across. Yeah. Mm. Could you so imagine the technology set to do it? Could you imagine state share? Yeah. So like I'm I'm in the cup I'm in the cup final and I'm ten minutes five minutes out from potentially losing and I I can't do this. You can save your stage on the eighty fifth minute. You've had a man sent off. You drop it in the chat. You drop it in the link and let someone else jump in and try and save you in those final five minutes. That's Sh- great for making a narrative. Friend. To create a narrative from something like that would be brilliant. Let's say you've got like you know you've got a, a, a lower league team to to a cup final. And they're against a, a really high rated team. I'm not going to throw any names out there because I don't want to be biased in any way whatsoever. But um, but yeah, let's say you're in that position and like you are up in the game, but the odds are stacked against you. And then it comes down to the final final five minutes. It could be brilliant for creating some sort of narrative for the sport right there as well. Um, but we've not heard anything about state share for FIFA. Yeah. No, yeah. Uh, I was thinking crowd choice as well. That could be great for like if you if you're streaming and like say like you should I sign this player? Yes or no? That sort of stuff. Yeah, even just crowd oh, play. Yeah. I need I need an extra yeah. player for this game. Look over at the subs bench in your chat. Yeah, get on. Let's get on the pitch, and then they just join your game. Again, it, like a sports game has so many outlets to mm-hmm. to really really oh. utilize the stadium features, but. 
I'm just not optimistic about FIFA no. at the moment for Stadia. <clears throat> I mean, I'm I'm buying it. I've already said I've held off on it this long. I might as well commit and, and buy it and support EA and show them that uh, I want to play the game. But just the the prospect of playing it on my phone and on the tablet when the world returns to normality and I'm yeah. back on the road with work, um, or just being able to play it away from the big like do my transfers while sat in a cafe on yeah. the motorway or. I don't want to be on the big. T- I'm in bed at night, and I just want to do a couple of transfers or training sessions on the touchscreen element of it. It was like yeah. you cannot do that on any other platform. It's so unique, yeah. and I think it lends itself so well. But uh, guess we'll I mean, find I out mean, in ten days. It's it's down to price and the proximity to FIFA 22 that's making me less interested, hmm. unfortunately. Well, we'll see. We'll see. Uh, yeah. Speaking of other sports titles, though, we also got the uh, the ratings board. Uh, the ESRB dropped this week that MotoGP 21 has been rated for Stadia as well, so that means we should uh, should see a release mentioned at some point in the the next uh, a couple of days weeks. Uh, it's generally scheduled for an April 22nd release date on other platforms, so uh, that is on the yeah. horizon. So if you're a big MotoGP fan, um, it covers the official 2021 season whether that's in, in much existence due to the restrictions and such. Uh, the usual, like, customise your bike, man, do a managerial career, uh, tweak it and uh, take to the tracks. Kind of similar vibes for me from Monster Jam. I'm not that much into MotoGP uh, sport, but it's a it's a big title coming, uh, hopefully mm. quite close. If it's had the rating and it comes out everywhere else on April 22nd, the stars are almost aligning with this one. Yeah. No Stadia logo on the trailer, mind. I will point that out. But a rating so close to release bodes well for me for an actual day and date uh, drop. So I think it's likely. Hmm. I think it is likely. Um, yeah. We, uh, quite a while back, Jack, actually, it was probably a good 30 episodes back now, the podcast, we talked about how we were getting all of these racing games coming to Stadia, and it definitely felt for a while that we were like the platform was becoming very much the place to play racing games for a while with the likes of Grid and anything um, F1 20. Yeah, Codemasters anything like that. To, uh, really like yeah, Stadia. Codemasters definitely seemed to be all in on this, didn't they? So uh, yeah, it's 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 promising. It's promising because hmm. this this is what we need. It needs to cater yeah. for everyone. And I know we've seen some people say the pro games are pretty average this month. But again, games aren't for everything. The pro games, okay. I look at them as a supplement to the service. Uh, I have the pro subscription to support the platform. Yeah. But also, I know fine well that every other month I get quite a decent little gem. Like, let's face it, we got Little Nightmares 2 for free last month. Yeah. Like that, So we, I, I know we've said that the FIFA being free is kind of beyond them. But let's face it, like, Little Nightmares 2 was £25 on launch. Brand new title. FIFA's an older title that we are, like looking at EA's track history on Stadia is probably going to be dropping at twenty nine ninety nine or less. There could be room in there for coming free or heavily, heavily discounted. Uh, hmm. But these things can happen. Again, I just have that belief that something has to change in the wind this year from the marketing team or the deals that they're doing or their roadmap announcements or a connect. If they can't keep going down this narrative that clearly isn't working for them from a journalist standpoint, from the public space standpoint, yeah. uh, whether whether COVID has had big limitations on what they've been able to do and spend this year. But as a business, business evolves over time and I don't think it's going to stay stagnant year on year on year. Otherwise, it, it will die. It will fizzle out. They need mm-hmm. to evolve and invest money and, yeah. and hopefully we're going to see something change drastically at some point, hopefully sooner rather than later otherwise the narrative's not going to change um yeah i just want something to be excited for mm, coming to yeah. the platform yeah i think i think everyone That's feels it. like that right now simple as that <laughs> and uh i don't even know how to make that segue from moto gp to dark Siders 2 there's there's no <laughs> there is no correlation uh if you fall off a bike and get seriously injured <laughs> something i don't even know your death will turn up <laughs> your death will turn up uh but yes another game uh, that has been read as well is dark Siders 2 uh definitive edition now i just want to pause there lads i am a big fan of cheesy jokes dad jokes puns play on words <laughs> All yeah. that kind of bad, terrible humour. Definitive edition, edition is a <laughs> terrible stretch. It's such a bad twist on the word definitive. It's not even close. Definitive. You do play as deaf in this game, though. Yes, That's right. not the point. The, 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 the <laughs> play on words should be a lot smoother than that. Like, jeez. But yeah, so Darksiders 2, <laughs> definitive edition. 
rated for Stadia. Uh, hopefully, we'll see that uh, drop some point soon. Uh, Tom, I think you've probably played the most of this game in the past mm. than than either us two have. Um, yep. Do you want to give the the audience a little rundown of what this game is, what it uh, what it plays like? Yeah, absolutely. So you play as as Richie said before, you play as one of the four horsemen of the apocalypse. So you, in this game, you play the titular death um and the way i would most describe this game is that it's sort of like a an action ro- a arpg sort of hack and slash type game similar to we discussed pre-show a mix between like the older god of war games and you're sort of like legend of zelda in a strange way just in the sense of how the world is built um you know the world is full of puzzles you've got um you've got to think your way through different sort of level levels you know like areas i suppose yeah. like stages uh, figuring out yeah. yeah in a way you've got to figure out how to like open le- you know open doors with levers use elevators use portals all these different things just to tra- traverse different areas to reach your objective um it's it's relatively open world as well which is something i quite like so you can you know you can obtain items and upgrades and things um later on in the game that allow you to go back and explore different areas a little bit further um but it's it's a game that i've really enjoyed in the past before i never got the chance to play the third one so i can't quite rate it compared to the others but the the second one was definitely uh a game that that i personally really enjoyed and put a lot of time into it um i'm excited to actually see this one come to stadia again sort of waiting to see what the price point is because i'm still sort of feeling like we're getting a lot of old games that are remastered now coming to the platform yeah definitive edition um so i'm sort of waiting to see what's going on and it sounds like richie's got a little bit of background music to throw in there well. yeah, apparently he's an ice cream van in my estate <laughs> just ignore that ice cream a little bit uh, a little bit less four horsemen of the apocalypse and a little bit more uh <laughs> i don't know have you seen the ice cream vans in the uk yeah, that's true, true. <laughs> four scoops but, um, of the apocalypse it's it, it's nice to actually see like i was saying before a, a game of this genre coming to stadia really because hmm. we could do with more of these sorts of games we know how successful the god of war franchises and we already have uh dark siders genesis so yeah we i mean we joked about that yeah. not going on sale for since launch it's been on the platform yeah. since day one if i'm not mistaken mm-hmm. right it was one of the launch titles and i think it, it only got a sale at the turn of this year for the first time so it held its price point like a nintendo game does <laughs> uh for a long long mm-hmm. time and uh, yeah that was kind of one of the reasons now, is it how much are we talking dark siders genesis is currently 20 pounds 99 yeah wow. pro sale so if there's ever a time to pick up it uh it's certainly yeah. now um we should also point out as well that dark side is three you mentioned it there tom you said um you've not had a chance to rate it yet funnily enough it has been rated uh by the srb uh on stadia we've just not heard a peep about it it was reported a good while yeah. back so that could be two and three maybe dropping as part of like a bundle back to back um, some kind of like joint sale. If you buy one, you get discount off the, the this for the follow up. And uh, <laughs> again, we should also point out that they're all from THQ Nordic. So as much yeah. as we joke about the them and the Embracer Group buying up all businesses, this clearly has a benefit to Stadia because the more they buy, the more games it looks like we're going to get on the platform because they uh, they seem to be all in between the Dark Siders games, um, Saints Row. SpongeBob, Destroy All Humans. There's a lot of titles to possibly even rival Ubisoft for how many uh, how many games are coming across. So great to see. Hopefully, we'll hear about a launch date some point soon. Uh, there is a couple of ratings being stacked up that make me suspect that we're going to hear something from Stadia outside of a blog. Because okay. let's face it, we're in yeah. we're going to be in the middle of March soon. Like, how long do they go without a, an event like a connect? Like, are we just? Expecting... <laughs> I was I was waiting for you to drop the word. I was like, how long before Chris says connect? We were told <laughs> yeah. there was going to be another connect, yeah. and now here we are, at, ticking into the next quarter of the year, and we've heard nothing. This was before before they laid off 150 staff, though. So <laughs> that is maybe the person in charge of the connect isn't there anymore. Well, you do have to just think, though. Sorry, folks. This the nintendo directs and the pokemon direct that was like last last month have now got me excited for at least three games coming to the switch yeah yeah playstation state of play happened as well they've, answered the, yeah. they've announced the vr2 and a bunch of vr titles so mm-hmm. wheels wheels are turning uh we've got some of games fest announced again e3 is going to happen in a digital way uh gdc 
happening soon as well. We've got to remember that yep. across the course yep. of spring into summer. So the wheels are turning everywhere else, it would appear. So, yes, Tom. <laughs> Connect, please. Any, I'll just the only say- thing that I'd, I'd have to say is I don't really think a connect can happen until Phil Harrison feels like it's safe to come out of his nuclear war bunker. <laughs> like he's, he's, got to, he's got to lay low long enough to let all of this sort of negative press fly by. So could, maybe could come maybe. out in a disguise, get himself a nice wig and some glasses. Hello, I, I, I'm Phil's that. brother, I, Dave I think Harrison. That's, <laughs> Hill Harrison. I think that's the wrong approach, though, because if he's hiding in his war bunker waiting for the negative press to disappear, it's just all those who are completely anti-stadia are just digging the heels in further mm. so they just whenever anything comes about they're just going to tear it to shreds well so I think you just need to be brave and just get out there and tell us what is planned be brave be brave yeah but uh, whether we do or not hear from Hill Farrison we'll have to wait and find out but speaking of uh, grinding and uh Getting loot, I guess, uh, gentlemen. Your we, in. We, you're digging your heels in. We got a uh, update from Square Enix and Marvel on a next gen overview for their new ti- uh, their new title, their new title to next gen, I guess, coming out from Crystal Dynamics. Um, I wanted to bring this to the talking point, gents, because I know we've said a few times about what's lacking in the Avengers game, and I've personally put over a hundred hours into it, and I've had a great time with it. However, what it what does it look like long term and i think that the second half of this show definitely leans into talking more about games as a service uh on stadia thankfully all the titles we're talking about are, are very much uh here and present which as far as the platform goes having a games as a service on the platform means it's going to be supported they can't just pull it it's, it's there it exists they have to support it in a way uh, otherwise that's just more bad press coming your way uh, but yes, for Marvel's Avengers, we know the Hawkeye content is going to be dropping at the end of this month. Um, but they came out with a weird statement this week regarding yeah. uh, the next-gen launch. The XP level-up system, uh, essentially... Richie, you'll be thrilled to know about this. So will the ice cream guy. Um, <laughs> once you hit level 25, the amount of XP required to reach uh, level 50 is being tweaked to make it harder. So, essentially, from yeah March 18th onwards, if you have a character who isn't level 50, it's now going to take arguably up to twice as long to reach level 50 through XP. I've got seven days to grind. And, I've got seven and, days to grind. <laughs> I don't think that's a good idea, actually. Well, the, the reasoning... I think it's literally the opposite. <laughs> we'll give you the reasoning. So they have said yeah. that... The, the arc with most games as a service, most XP grind ones, they said it's usually there's a, there's a difficulty curve and naturally the higher up your level goes, the more XP it requires to get the higher levels. Uh, yeah. It makes it harder, it makes it tougher, it makes like you're feeling, you're achieving something at a, at a tougher rate. What they've said currently with Avengers is it's just a, it's a straight platform. So from level one to 50, it's just whatever missions, whatever levels you do, the XP, it's the same per level. And what happens then is all of your abilities you unlock and the skill points you spend on fancy heroics, you get inundated with so many so fast. I think, Richie, when we've played on a Thursday night, we've leveled up like three or four levels in one 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 mission. So then all of a sudden you, you, you're buying heroic points here, skill points here, and what X Square Enix have said, or Crystal Dynamics have said more likely, is that um, it's a bit overwhelming for new players. They're getting new abilities and they're not able to implement them or use them because it's just so much flung at them so quick. And changing the XP curve will slow that rate down. So essentially you're not getting new skills every other level. It's going to be potentially 20 missions between each new skill unlock. So from their point of view, I get it. From my point of view as the player... That just means I have to grind out 20 more of the yeah. same levels I, to get to the I same think, point. For me, I think they're focusing on the wrong issue. If the issue is mm. the players are getting overwhelmed with too many skills and abilities, then the obvious answer for me is your characters have too many skills and abilities. You need to rework your talent trees. Mm-hmm. You'd, what you don't want to do is make it less fun to play, and that's what increasing the grind is generally going to do. But it still doesn't address the major issues I have with that game is what's the point of leveling up? Yeah. What is there to do? Yeah. Yeah. Because we... it's, it's just, it's a very repetitive game, cookie cutter scenario, and that's it. The, yeah. the campaign was fantastic, the single player campaign, genuinely fantastic. 
the multiplayer is distinctly mediocre. And it's exactly the issues that I, I had concerns when I saw like the initial trailers, where I felt they were leaning too heavily on the IP rather than trying to make a solid game than using the IP to give that little special something. Mm. I mean, that's that's my biggest take of why I enjoy it yeah. so much. I'm a big Marvel fan. I'm a big MCU fan. Yeah. So playing as my favorite heroes has kept me in the loop. But I'll not deny the grind is... If I have to fight Abomination and Taskmaster one more time, <laughs> I'm going to go yeah. crazy. How has this game been out nearly half a year and we're yet to get any more villains? They have the biggest catalogue going back through decades of comics of villains... And I still have to fight the same clone of Abomination every other mission. Yeah. Like, come on, guys. Like, you've it, got it, eight it heroes even, in there. Get more villains in there. Let me fight them. It, there's even issues I have with, like, we've played online together. Mm. And I don't ever feel like I'm playing with you. I feel like we just happen to be in the same world. We're not really... Very rare we're combining in terms of any mm. real strat strategy. Yeah, there's no so requirement the for, flat. for us to complement so each other. It feels to me like... The icing on the cake is fantastic, but the cake is stale. Ooh, Interesting analogy. Yeah, and it's got a beautiful cherry on top as well, with that the MCU, the Marvel stuff. Yeah. <laughs> but then the core mechanics of the game are just kind of a bit lackluster, yeah. unfortunately. Yeah. It's an interesting one because there's so much content that we th we kind of know about from like leaks and theories. Like we know the Wakanda stuff was pushed back uh, due yeah. to the unfortunate passing of Chadwick Boseman. Um, we know PlayStation have Spider Man still coming. And yet they've not mentioned anything about when... Like, is that just their break glass in case of emergency? Like, the game's floundering. Get Spider-Man out and pull uh, loads of people back in. I don't think I don't think the issue is just more content. I think it's retailering what the content is and how it plays. Yeah. It's, 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 it's variety. Yeah. That's, with any games as a service, for me, yeah. it's like, again, it needs more enemies to fight. It needs more variety. I'm fed up with fighting robots as well. Like, give me some Kree to fight... Um, give me some Ultron things. I know they're robots anyway, but there's just got to be so much rich history they can dive into. There's so out. much. Mm. Yeah, there's so much yeah. to do. So many things yeah. that they could potentially add. It's, locations. It's like more more environments. You're playing for mm. the same, like four locations, four or five locations. City, with desert, just slightly snow. different tweaks. Yeah, with slightly different map tweaks. Yeah. Where the campaign, when you play for the campaign, you constantly change an environment. Everything was well designed. Personally, the online, I feel of, it's just like I feel it's just jumped on the map. Personally, I'm sick of going into reactors and having to destroy the same four bloody uh, <laughs> levers to shut the reactor down. <laughs> when you shut the reactor yeah. down as well, and it does the big EMP blast that wipes out yeah. all of the robots. Why does Tony Stark not shut down? Because <laughs> he's awesome. I mean, imagine that you just, you, you just get killed yeah. and have to restart every time if you're Iron Man because the the, yeah. the big energy blast wipes it out. But yeah, it's it's again it's games as a service, but you're totally right, Richie, with your um your kind of summary yeah. there that doing the XP wasn't the biggest problem with this game. Yeah. And I do honestly believe there is a world where once there's more content and they add more characters, I do generally feel the great thing with the IP, which is the biggest benefit of this this particular game, is that they can bring stuff in seasonally with new characters. Like there is gonna be a a, a boost in players once Black Panther drops. There is going to be a boost in players when Spider-Man drops. There's such yeah. a wealth of characters they can bring in. I, I, I do think it, do, it will benefit the game, but they need to get the, the actual loop hope, right. Yeah. That destiny loop that keeps bringing people back week in, week out for that grind. Yeah, my hope is these new car character drops and more, these new content drops like Hawkeye and uh, Kate Bishop and Black Panther and eventually Spider-Man for PlayStation, they can be the things that keep give it a lifeline while they work on the fundamental issues. Because mm. he is a great, potential great game there. I do believe that. It just They're just not nailing it yet. Not indeed. But I guess we'll uh, hear about that soon. And it kind of goes back to my thing about a roadmap, but this they've not also not mentioned anything beyond Hawkeye. So again, yeah. silence isn't, isn't a great look. Um, especially in a world where EA just dropped the ball on Anthem completely and said, we're out. Like, we're not... Yeah. Anthem Next is not a thing. Like, the risk with games as a service, if it starts to flounder and the developers go quiet, I think over time, the audience will just start to slowly back away out of the room with yeah. it. Uh, if Avengers, after Hawkeye drops in March, they stay quiet through May, June, at what point do people go, right, I've fought Abomination 563 times now. I'm, I'm, I think I'm done. I've had my fill. 
move they away. They almost need a war table around about the time Hawkeye drops. Go, oh, Hawkeye's out now. Go get it. Black Panther's next. He's your date, and he's what we're working on going forward. Yeah. Because this would have been a great jumping off platform with next gen. It's coming to PS5. Yeah. It's coming to Series X. It's still available on all the other platforms. With next gen, we're bringing ray tracing and... Here's the pipeline for next gen. Spider-Man, yep. Black Panther, Wakanda Hub, Open World, new w- th- those bad guys from Infinity War, the little creature dog things, yep. whatever they are. They're the new villains. They've got different attacks, different moves. You have to think differently as a hero. Oh, by the way, it just... But it's just... Yep. Quiet. Yep. Can't even hear the ice cream, man. But uh, let's move on from Avengers. I'm sure we're going to hear some updates and such on that one. Uh, but again, it's going to be available anywhere. Uh, Weather Stadia gets the boost... To next gen, ray tracing and such, uh, we'll have to wait and see. Um, use that time stone and go forward a little bit. And uh, we'll see uh, see what the future looks like for Marvel's Avengers. Oh, just add Doctor Strange already, come on. And yeah, oh yeah, you could add, add yeah, there's no magicians in it yet. The concept, again, characters, there's plenty of characters they can yep. play with. Um, hell, I'd quite easily take a side mission with Mordok at this point. With his claw arms, trying to solve puzzles with those claw arms and that big head, something like that. Uh, anyway, uh, speaking of things passing through time, uh, we got a APK breakdown from our friends over at Nine to Five Google this past week, and uh, the APK breakdown. Unfortunately, uh, the biggest thing is that uh, Hailstone has disappeared. So we've theorized, we've talked about it. Yeah. <laughs> but uh, it's gone. There is no mention of Project Hailstone. I'll throw it over to you. Or is there? Um, (laughs) Do we think it's changed? I I don't know. I I wonder whether there's been so much speculation out there that they've decided to go, ooh, maybe we do need to keep this under wraps a little bit more because people are starting to either get a little bit too excited or they're starting to get a little bit ahead of themselves. Like we've seen it happen before of thinking like, oh, Google are going to announce something and then it's been absolutely Hmm. effing disappointing. Um, I think I don't think Hailstorm is gone. I think it could either be preparation to announce something or um, or trying to stay hopeful. Maybe they have just taken it off the table for the time being to sort of, you know, quell suspicion, quell um, the sort of community uh, idea hub as we, we would we would like to be, like the brainstorming and so on. Mm. I don't know. I'm not too far... Really, we don't know what it is. So it's too easy to read way too much into something like this when we yeah. don't have a clue what Hailstorm could potentially even be. Yep. So it's hard. It's really hard to go. Oh my god, oh, Stadia is doomed. They've got rid of Hailstorm when yeah. Hailstorm could have been something incredibly trivial. Yeah, the reality um, is they probably didn't yeah. realize that people were going to take these like co- little bits of code in in the breakdown of Android files and go, oh. This is, it just shows you how starved we are for news, <laughs> yeah. really. That, that 9 we, to 5 we Google have been doing it since day one, so... <laughs> yeah, I wonder... That's down to Stadia doing the re- their own research. Yeah, I wonder if um, at Google HQ, there's yeah. like there's, they, they have like a, a Google Note file that says, right, we can't use the word Project Hailstorm because people just go crazy over any kind of terminology yeah. we use. So they have yeah. to have like an index of Project Hailstorm is, is, is now listed down as A, B, Y, Z... That's the code. So whenever the, the A, B, Y is edited, just so they, they don't give anything a title because then people will go crazy with it. Um, or alternatively, they have a list of loads of different project names and they go, oh, yeah, um, do you want to just put in Project Thundercloud this week yeah, and see what happens out there in the community? Hmm. Uh, I, swap them out. I do appreciate, though, that clearly in the breakdown files that uh, they're aware people are looking now because they've got a couple of April Fool's uh, jokes in there. Yeah. Um, there's this 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 time around they had please install an additional 640 kilobytes of RAM in your controller to play this game. That way you get more ray tracing. Yeah, hundred percent. You get 640 more rays. Uh, they've also said uh, mesh must have holes of at least 707 uh, millimeters in diameter for optimal gaming experience. Also, make sure that any yeah. nearby wheels are spinning at no more than 20 RPM. See, that was the problem with my internet cutting out with the podcast before. My mesh holes just weren't big enough, so I had to go yeah, drill some more. Then big mesh yeah. holes. And uh, my Anybody favorite who's one, got Google Mesh Wi-Fi knows you need to increase those mesh hole sizes. Big, it's like one division's big hex network over your house. That's what you need. Uh, 
that's that's the trick. Uh, and the final one, which I really do like, which is clearly a nod to all of the shit that's hit the fan this past month, yeah. is uh, in the in the text. There's a little bit of code that said, "Sorry, this code can only be redeemed after January twentieth, twenty thirty eight, which is a nice little nod towards that Stadia will still be here in the year twenty thirty eight for you to redeem said code. I sometimes wonder, do the higher ups at Google know that this, their coders are putting this stuff in there? <laughs> or do they find out later? <laughs> it's like, um, who put that in there? <laughs> possibly not. I'll tell you what I am going to do. Yeah. I'm going to live put live on the podcast. Uh, no, live on the podcast. I'm going to go ahead to January 20th, 2038 and remind myself to redeem a Stadia code. <laughs> wow. <laughs> and just wonder if, if future Chris... Yeah. Uh, actually yeah. has a clue if, what that means it's going to show up in many years time if, I'm going to look at it and go what, what the fuck if <laughs> what's 48 men- year old Chris <laughs> oh, I'd say what's mental here is the fact that to me 2038 seems really far in the future it's only 17 years away it's not I mean, like that, it's taken a while to scroll to on my calendar if I'm honest I mean, <laughs> I mean you say only 17 years it's still 17 years yeah oh no no like, don't get me wrong yeah. but like 2038 still feels like yeah. futuristic to me like really futuristic it's before cyberpunk yeah. still true that true that wow it does take a while to get to when you're flicking through the months <laughs> with that it's fifa will be out before the time i get to 2038 <laughs> um <laughs> keep keep stalling for time gents talk about code and how you love code. oh code code what's what, your what favorite about? code tom what's your favorite code oh uh, let's not get into that i mean i teach it as part of my day job don't i really uh, just having a quick look through the apk stuff so one thing that's worth mentioning is that it does seem to be that we're moving towards having a party chat system as well now what's quite interesting about the actual snippet of code is it does also directly reference android tv as well so whether we'll be able to actually um have our party chat features, so having our voice calls and so on, um, not just on, on on our devices, but also on Android TV. Because uh, I'm just double checking, actually, uh, one thing that's come out quite a bit recently is we've seen a lot of articles in the media about the LG TVs that feature Stadia as well, haven't we? Mm-hmm. And um, Richie, I know you've had some thoughts about the choice of imagery that they've used for uh, the LG TV. Oh, God, yes. <laughs> In particular, the controller choice. It, let's be fair, this was a one-off article, uh-huh. and they use an inverted PlayStation 4 controller to represent Stadia, because there's clearly no images of the Stadia controller in existence. Um, <laughs> but what, what I don't like about it is when you say inverted, we literally do mean inverted, as in for yeah. some reason the buttons are on the left side. The D-pad is on the right side. The D-pad the is on, on the, the left right side. side. Right. Actually, so what sort of monstrosity that controller is? This is that controller you use for it. <laughs> That's true. Yeah. yeah. So the, the, the choice of, is over there. <laughs> the choice of imagery for that that picture in yeah. the article was um, questionable, but you know we, we won't draw any conclusions. It's just from a, it. it's just lazy. Like, <laughs> like, questionable at best. Absolutely, absolutely. Right, I found the date. I've up, I've updated it. I've uh, I've saved it as redeem Stadia code. And in the in the description, just so I give myself a bit of information, it says, uh, "Hi, future Chris. Uh, Stadia posted a secret code in its Android data file, joking about its existence in 2038. Claim the code now, Chris. Uh, you're welcome, past Chris. Thumbs up. Also, congratulations on Sounds of Stadia podcast episode 1000. So, <laughs> I'll save that in there. And uh, if if we're still around, if uh, <laughs> if we haven't retired or whatever." Uh, I'll keep you updated, ladies and gentlemen. Uh, just like the FIFA countdown. <laughs> Fantastic. That's gonna read. It's a Wednesday, by the way. Yeah, that's a weird one. That's if that, uh, if that is that well is relevant. Uh, speaking of anyway, things in the future. We also got a little bit of uh, funny news this week from the Outriders demo, which of course takes place on the planet Enoch in the well distant future uh, on a different planet, and. Um, the demo's out in the wild now. Richie, you've had a chance to jump in now, so all three of us have played the demo. You've not spent a wa- much time with it, but uh, do you want to give us your quick first takes? I feel like I'm being very negative in this show. It's like, Outriders, it's a good game. It's just not for me. I, If you're into the division, you'll love Outriders. I personally, it was the point where I got past the initial, the, the prologue, mm. And he came up and started telling me about well tears and stuff. I just went, 
Oh god, here we go. <laughs> I just don't care Ballard about beat. these sort of persistent online games anymore. Like, and I, always, I felt I was thinking about it. I felt games like this. I think always lose something because you have to try and balance between playing over with other people and also telling a good story. And they don't. They're not fully compatible, in my opinion. Yeah. Mm. Um, but I think if you're into things like The Division, you're into your online games and you regularly just get the most enjoyment out of playing online with other people, mm. I think this could be a fantastic game. It plays very well. Um, I actually tried it on both PC and PlayStation 5. Uh-huh. Out of curiosity. Um, I, the reason I decided to jump on PC because I never play any games on my PC and thought, why not? And unfortunately, my graphics card isn't good enough. <laughs> Oof. I could get I could get um, sixty frames per second on low settings. Bear in mind I'm I'm running a four K monitor, um, and it was a bit choppy, uh, a mm. bit frame droppy. Um, unfortunately, so I, so I switched to PS Five and got a better experience. Choppy and droppy. So it'll be interesting to see how it does run on Stadia. Then um, a couple of things they did pick out from the demo is essentially that because it is a demo and for for really good reasons, your progress will carry over into the main game, which is great. That because it's because it's got the um, cross progression and such that even though I start my demo on PS Five, I believe I link my accounts. I should be able to take that level over to Stadia when it drops. I don't know if they've clarified you can jump platforms, but you can definitely keep your progression. So we'll, I guess I'll find that out on April yeah. 1st. Um, yeah. But yeah, they said people were basically loot grinding the hell out of the demo. Because um, again, that's what gamers do. We just try and break the code of anything. And uh, yeah, they're going to be super powered come the game's actual launch. And uh, yeah, they've basically had to nerf that so so people well, can. just goes to show you how into the game people are, how excited they are, mm. apart from me. <laughs> Um, for if anyone's interested and wondering why my graphics card couldn't keep up, I'm using a Radeon RTX um, 580. RX 580, sorry. It's not exactly a beast of a card. Beast. <laughs> but uh, yeah, and we're, we're sure we're going to hear a little bit more about Outriders. I'm sure they're going to use the demo as like a, a beta test bed to see what the numbers are. Uh, over 2 million people have downloaded and played it just over that weekend. So already it's it's yeah. doing fairly good numbers as a, as a good entry yeah. point. Um, but then again, so did Avengers. So Square Enix yep. trying to get into this multiplayer um, market again. We should probably clarify I mean, as well. It are. is it is a single player story campaign. You can just have friends in that world with you. Yeah. Yes. So it's not we we know it's not quite the division as such. But yeah, my vibe was it was Gears of War meets Division. Uh, and yeah, personally, I I really enjoyed what I saw. And like back to what you said a few moments ago, Tom. There's nothing really big on the horizon. I've just finished Immortals Phoenix Rising. I'm playing the DLC now, the first in New God DLC. Um, so like, I am in that weird moment where I need to look at something else. And there's still three weeks to go until our Riders comes out. Obviously, we have FIFA in, in and amongst that for me. But uh, yeah, I guess we'll see. We'll see how it lands. Well, um, you mentioned there, Richie, though, as well, the division. And uh, they've came, Ubisoft have clarified uh, this time round that there is going to be a roadmap for support uh, as we head into tw- through 2021. And uh, what they've announced is they're going to bring back the seasonal content from previous years. So they're going to be doing new stuff as well. But if you missed out on the kind of the Warlords of uh, New York DLC that dropped and any of the seasonal content and loot and equipment, they're going to be replaying those seasons. So if you missed out last time, you can jump in. Uh, in year two, essentially, and pick up that uh, loot. A couple of interesting bullet points which I wanted to just highlight. Uh, just to show you said there, Richie, about how many people really, really commit to these games, whether it's a demo or the main campaign. Uh, within the division, they've said that it's got more players than ever before. Uh, 40 million players for the franchise. That's four times the population of Sweden. Random number, they Not random bad. country they picked out there. I uh, appreciate it. I appreciate it. <laughs> uh, March 2020 saw the division's highest activity. Uh, agent armor got destroyed 11 billion times uh, a funny one for me was uh, there's one agent out there in the world who loves the division 2 that much that he's revived more than 27,000 of his fellow players shout <laughs> out to a, you that guy's a hero you are yeah. clearly destined to be the medic class yeah. in your in your in your life I wonder wow. who ranks second. How far? What's that gap between one and two? Oh, must twenty-seven thousand revivals. Like it? one, the yeah. players around you are clearly not that great. But two, you <laughs> sir, you sir deserve a medal. 
Um, Maybe he's just luring them um, noobs into bad into bad situations, getting them killed <laughs> so he can revive them to get their Still world record. Um, <laughs> we could be saying this guy's a hero, but he might just actually be manipulating indeed. people. Um, 17 billion NPCs have had skill kills, uh, and 156 billion shots were headshots, uh, and 97 million floors were completed in the summit, which is the kind of like tier the tiered uh, kind of end game content. And uh, one agent. We've got one who's the great medic. One agent has cleared more than thirty-six thousand floors, so that's uh, that's a lot of the division. And uh, yeah, yeah, it's it's, it's nice to see they've came out and said like uh, they're going to keep supporting the game. We've said we know Ubisoft are really really good at supporting their titles long term wise, and the division is one that in in the the gaming kind of eco bubble that I listen to is one that's still quite often spoke about. Uh, I know the, yeah. the Resident Evil content dropped a few weeks ago. That brought a couple of people back in. And it just seems like people just enjoy that loot grind in a similar vein to Destiny. Whereas I know yeah, we, it's... us three aren't involved in that, but we do know a lot of people who just keep going back to those same games month in, yeah, month I... out. It's balanced well, so there's a lot of people who just... That's that, that's what they do when they play games. They just play The Division. Mm-hmm. But then they keep bringing these additional content drops, so people who have kind of lapsed jump back in, to play the new content, then bounce again. Mm-hmm. So it's they've got it. Yeah, it's coming as well. Uh, we should jump back in and play the division. Actually, it was one of the first games I think we all three of us played on Stadia, yeah. and uh, yeah, we never played it on stream. No, we didn't. We actually played it just as friends offline. Yeah, interesting. What a waste mm. of content opportunity. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, but we'll see, we'll see, because we enjoyed Wildlands as well, yeah. and uh, yeah, just like mooching around New York with mates and clicking heads. Yeah. Um, yeah. So, final kind of big stories of the week to to start to wrap up on the news is uh, this. This one is kind of it's got a sourness to it, so we won't end on this. But uh, football manager Richie, you're, you're the uh, football manager player out of the three of us. Uh, I'm more of a FIFA person. However, there's been a lot of movement in. Uh, the community this past couple of weeks constantly asking where is Football Manager 21 and it's made all the more worse because we know Football Manager 20 was pulled from the store so if you hadn't already purchased the game you currently can't get your hands on it Um, apparently this is something that happens with Football Manager every year to do with contract negotiations and players it disappears and then it eventually comes back to the store once stuff's been renegotiated Football Manager 21 has, has now been out on other platforms for over 100 days now. But to just to rub a bit of salt in the wound, it's going to be free on Xbox Game Pass, the other competitor's cloud service uh, from Xbox and I, the team Microsoft. To add more salt to the wound, Football Manager 20 didn't return to the stage you store. Oh, so has it returned elsewhere? Yeah, I think so. Ooh. So yeah, get that salt and rub it in. Again, yeah, that's... it doesn't impact me, but I've seen a lot of people and they always tweet at Sega and Stadia and say like, can we have an update? And their radio silence is just, it's just rude, quite frankly. If it's not coming, just tell us. Yeah. Because yeah. Yeah, yeah. there's people out there. And again, if this <laughs> happens with FIFA, FIFA comes out, people play it, great. FIFA 20 news in, at 22 is announced for late September. For the new football season kicks off the world starts to return to normal people should be allowed back in stadiums in real life come that point of the year fingers crossed the hype starts to build and are we going to be sat here radio silent September ticks by October December January February oh don't worry it's coming in March St. Patrick's Day get your Guinness and celebrate a pint while we watch the football it's I, not good enough. Yeah, it, it suffers the same. If it does come to Stadia, it's suffering the same issues in my mind as FIFA, um, where it's probably past its prime. Yeah. I, I just actually double checked, and F- Football Manager 20 isn't on Steam. Right. So it, hasn't re- it didn't return. Right. Okay. okay. Which is weird. I find that weird. It's, it's such like, a weird thing. Full stop. If it if it's like goes on sale like September and gets pulled in December, hmm. like, I mean, I know that is the critical sale point for that sort of game. But still, it's weird. But it's a shame because I think um, Stadia is a perfect place for a game like Football Manager. Because I know we've got friends who like Football Manager who don't want to spend a lot of money on a decent lab a laptop. Oh, and yeah. being able, if you're being able to play on Stadia on, on, a, on a cheap Chromebook, that could be the perfect home for it because mm. Stadia does support mouse and keyboard. 
But my assumption at the moment is they've looked at the stage, you probably look at the sales numbers and maybe had a nice offer from Microsoft and went, we're better off over with Microsoft. Yeah. But it is a, unfortunately, it's a sad state of affairs when your competitor yeah. is now bundling it. Not only, You don't have to even buy the game, it's just part of Game Pass. So you've got yeah. your £10 subscription, you've got Stadia Pro in one hand, where you don't get it and you have to pay for it, or you could drop ten pound to Microsoft Team Green and yeah. get the game for free. And yet here we are in Stadia, yeah, and we don't even have it as an option to purchase. And their Twitter yeah. account, Radio Silent, no press or mention from Stadia. We get it; it's down to the developers. But just, just tell it, just put us out of our misery. Yeah. Alas. Again, I've talked before. How I want to see more PC style games come to Stadia because I think there could be life for them on. Hmm on the platform, especially with the current GPU shortages. Yep. There's something where Stadia could capitalise, but they just don't seem to be at the moment. Exactly. True that. And uh, and we obviously do know. We've got Humankind coming uh, in the next few weeks. That's the first kind of P- big PC game, I'd say, that's made its way over. So be interesting to see them. how that lands on both, uh, how much it moves the needle and if it gives anyone a push to move other things across. Um Switching away then, final story of the week, gentlemen. I uh, just wanted to quickly get your opinions on this one. Uh, EA announced that they are moving support from Criterion, who are the usual studio within EA's umbrella that looks after the Need for Speed games. And after Need for Speed Heat uh, launched back in 2019, 2020? 2020? Heat. Either way, the last Need for Speed game. Okay. Yeah. They're moving their team over to help out with Battlefield, the next Battlefield title also known as Battlefield 6, uh, which a lot of people I've seen on social media would love that game to come over to Stadia as like the next, <laughs> the, the big EA, EA game we're all waiting and expecting is which of the two franchises do you think we'll see on Stadia first? Tom, do you think it'll be Battlefield or Need for Speed makes its way over Stadia first? Um, ooh. Shooter or racing? I, I, I have, I, yeah, I have a different, I have a different opinion between what I'd like and what I expect. Okay. <laughs> uh, what I'd like is Battlefield. What I expect is Need for Speed because I think it's just, again, it's 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 another type of game that I think they can just make a quick bit of cash on mm-hmm. without too much effort. Whereas Battlefield, I feel like it has to have more support in terms of online servers and so on as well for for games to be hosted on. So there's a bit of a difference, I think, between the two of them. Um, but like I say, I'd like to see Battlefield first. I'd like to. It'd be a lot more fun to play, mm. personally. I'm in agreement with Tom. Um, but I think I think with Battlefield, it needs, for it to work on Stadia at the moment, unfortunately, it needs to be cross play. I think every big online thing at the moment yeah. needs to be... Hard. Like If your audience is fractured amongst platforms, it doesn't benefit you as the developer because your audience is split. I think for Avengers, for Division, uh, the Outriders, everything like that, it is, I mean, Destiny have announced, Bungie you said later on this year, it will go cross-platform, and that's going to have mm-hmm. such a good injection boost yeah. for Stadia players and, and getting See, online. I like Bungie's reaction uh, announcement that, because said, yeah, it is going to go cross-platform. However, we're working on the PS5, Xbox Series X versions first. Mm-hmm. Yeah, priorities. That's, that's For me, that's fine. Yeah, we're prioritizing this, but then we'll do this next. Good. Told us they're giving us a roadmap. How about yeah, that? We, yeah, surprise, surprise. Expecting. But yeah... I've, I'd love to see Battlefield because I think um, Stadia is missing that first-person shooter in that sort of style. Mm. I think it could do really well. It could get a lot of people interested in Stadia again if the market is similar to how they did like Cyberpunk. Yeah, but it, it needs uh, to be cross-platform. Yeah, and it goes back to uh, our conversation from right at the beginning of the show, which was the outlook for stadia for 2021 if we take far cry 6 out of the mix which we know is coming riders republic Mm -hmm. don't know how big that's going to be it's not going to appeal to everybody outriders aside what does the the next seven eight months have in store as people who like the platform who play the platform on a regular basis I do honestly feel like we need that ten pole end of year game to look forward to, which traditionally the way the game's released would be Battlefield Six. Are we getting Call of Duty? Probably not. Will we get FIFA Day and Day? We don't know because they're silent on it. Battlefield Six is a big statement of intent. Like, yes, we're going to get a big title. Because again, I I'd, I'd, like I don't want to get here in December and all we've got is a hundred indie games. Sorry, I don't want that. <laughs> like, as a gamer, I yeah, want to I be think... playing the biggest, best things that are dropping this year. 
I, I think Battlefield would be a massive win because there's a lot of talk. There's two games that come up a lot in the Facebook groups, and it's Grand Theft Auto Five and Call of Duty Warzone. Battlefield could scratch that Warzone itch. Yeah. I enjoyed Battlefield 1. Yep. Really good game. I don't think I've ever played a Battlefield game. Ooh. They've gotten better. Hmm. I'd they've recommend gotten... 1 because it, it does it. The story's in little vignettes in World War 1. Is it the first one? No, no. This is, uh, no, this is like no, the 5th, no. 6th century uh, in the series. So they follow uh, Microsoft branding then? It was, yes. Yeah, it was almost... Uh, <laughs> It was yeah, it was because it went back to World War One, but for the story, it wasn't like one solid campaign. It broke it up into little vignette stories of like you focused yeah. on one person in the trenches, then it was one person in Italy, then one person, and you jumped around right. throughout the yeah. locations um, in different kind of outputs. But no, really enjoyed it. Really enjoyed the multiplayer as well. Uh, I, something about Battlefield when they do the big 60, 60 player map campaigns. And it goes through phases. So you have like an attack phase. Yeah. And then if you manage to take the checkpoints, the whole level shifts into a different part of the map. Yeah. Almost like you would in real warfare moving moving so through the, the stages of the fight. It's a fight. bit more interesting than just straight up team deathmatch. Yeah. It, like, don't get me wrong, it has team deathmatch as well. But the campaign yeah. ones I really, really enjoyed because it, just, it yeah. just made something different. And you could push back and forth in the battle and the defensive team could actually get the upper hand and push the attackers back. And yeah, it made for it's... some interesting combat stages. Similar to it Battlefront, me a bit of Battlefront, yeah, Battlefront. Yeah. It's the same concept, yeah, where there's different stages yeah. to go through, um, but we don't know yet. We don't know, yeah. um, so I guess we'll have to wait and find out and see uh, what's in the future for Stadia. Is Hailstorm a ton of games dropping? Will Game Pass give up Football Manager and bring it over to Stadia? And will Avengers finally change the villains from just? abomination and taskmaster <laughs> but we'll have to wait to find out and hopefully we'll be talking about all that on future episodes of the sounds of stadia podcast uh, that's been it for this show this week everybody thanks for tuning in and checking out the podcast whether in video form or listening on audio services around the world. A uh, little couple of shout outs just to wrap up the show this week. Uh, our good friend Lee uh, over at Stadia Dad on Twitter uh, is hosting a 24 hour charity stream of Red Dead Redemption in the coming weeks. Uh, uh, looking after the Greater Manchester charity for um, Fair Share. Uh, hashtag poverty is not a game and we of course three individuals here fully support that charity. Uh, I've dropped my donation in there so you can do that as well. Yeah. Head over to the Twitter account, uh, for all the information the news regarding, they did an announcement video this past week. Uh, go check that out. It's for a great cause. And, uh, of course, everyone uh, out there is probably struggling in the world right now with some shape or form due to the pandemic. Uh, so if you can spare a moment of time or anything uh, donation-wise, head over and check that out. Uh, it's a great cause. And uh, a final shout-out to the Google Stadia UK Facebook page, which us three are a part of. They're just on the cusp of reaching a 1,000 members right now. I think they're about five short. So if you are from the UK and you are into Stadia discussion and chat, head over, search for Google Stadia UK on Facebook and you'll find it. It's the Union Jack yeah. with the Stadia logo on there, front and centre. Uh, the news drops in there. People share discussion articles about pro games and such. Uh, it's a great group of people. So head over and check that out if you are so inclined. Uh, Richie, what have we got on the topical table for our side quest mission this week? So we're going to be comparing the offerings for portable gaming between Stadia and Switch. Stadia okay. and Switch, eh? You've got a Razer Kishi, Tom, so that's going to bring some interesting chat to the table. Uh, and remember, you can get these Sounds of Stadia SideQuest show up to five days early, uh, not on free feeds, over on patreon.com forward slash Sounds of Stadia. So from as little as $1.79p, head over, check out our tiers over on there if you wish to support us that little bit further and get some content a little bit early. Uh, that's been it for me. That's been it for the news. Uh, thank you very much for tuning in. My name's been Chris. I've been Tom. I've been Richie. We've been Sounds of Stadia. Go get that ice cream. Make it rain. Goodbye. <laughs>